so happy to be here with Manon, and I want to just have you say your 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 name for for everybody. Yes, thank you. I'm happy to be here. I'm Manon uh, Hunjens. It's the last name. It's yeah, Dutch. Right. It's awesome. Well, thanks for being here. And let me just share your official bio with everyone, and then we'll get into this conversation where we will talk about what does it mean to simply start. So I'm excited about that. So um, Manon is a community builder and entrepreneur and leads a global community of coaches. She believes that the only way to grow yourself and your business is to simply start, which is actually the name of her business. And the only thing you need is to know, to know is your next step. She brings together coaches in her community so that they can grow together in business and coaching and learn from each other from inspiring experts and mentors. And I'm really grateful that I've already had a chance to uh, do some teaching in your in your community. So thank you for bringing me there. So um, let's get into this. I you have been helping so many coaches and entrepreneurs and and just people who want to simply start a project. So I want you to kind of talk about this. Um, well, let me let's start here. Why is it so hard for for so many people, especially thinking about the people you work with? Why is it so hard for them to start? Yeah, that's, that's such a good question. And of course, I think like for many people, the thing that we teach and do is the thing that we have to learn ourselves the most. And I am a chronic overthinker myself. Um, and, you know, simply such for people who want to stop overthinking. I think that's actually often it. We just overthink. And what's underneath it is probably things often like maybe fear, fear of being rejected, fear of not succeeding, um, thinking of all the things that we probably would need to do or figure out as we go. And um, I, want, I, I read a quote actually recently that said something like, when we procrastinate, uh, or perfectionism is all often just uh, a reason to procrastinate. I think, um, yeah, but underneath it, I, I think almost always is is just a fear. A yeah, fear yeah, absolutely. And um, I, I, I mean, just from what I can tell, I think you embody the ability to just start and get going. So I think you're an inspiration to your your audience, your people. I mean, one example, for example, is that you live in Bali right now. Yeah. And that is a big move. I mean, where did you originally in Amsterdam? Is that right? I, I am originally from the Netherlands. Yeah. Um, a few years ago, I decided to um, leave the Netherlands behind, also without actually really knowing what it was just a strong calling wow. um, of leaving things behind and seeing where life would take me, which was not always as, uh, an easy journey. Um, but I think when we live from the heart, it isn't always necessarily easy, but it's always about taking that next step that feels right. Might feel scary and right at the same time. Um, yeah. 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 So there are a lot of people watching or listening to this who are um, wanting to simply start yeah. uh, their business or to take their business to the next step. Mm -hmm. So what, what is it? Do you, how do you yeah, guide people or, or encourage people as they take that scary next step? I mean, we know um, intellectually that, that we can overthink and that there's perfectionism. But yeah. now what? Now how do we actually do it? You know? Yeah, and I'm not gonna have like, I, I, I was afraid you're gonna ask me what is your one thing up point of advice because I don't probably have that um, because it's, it's easy to say, just do it. But right. that, that question is do what? Do what? You know? Yeah. Um, I think sometimes we cannot do it alone. Sometimes we can, but what, what I want to help people with is to go back to that feeling of why do I want this? What does excite me about it? You know, instead of the overthinking, go back to that place of excitement. I always want to help people get back to where it feels exciting and small. So make it small and, and connect, I guess, with, with what it is that you want to do and why you want to do it. Maybe why you want to serve people, because often your audience also what they want to do is serve and help people and there's a feeling there and a spark so I would always say connect first with that again um, and 
that's the smallest possible thing. And of course, when I work one on one with people or in the community with people, um, I go there and we go there together and um, we figure out what is that one next step that feels actually exciting. It feels scary, but also exciting. Um, and sometimes it's also about just finding your accountability or finding a partner. Doesn't have to be a professional coach, but someone that can be your cheerleader and can help you hold accountable because there's not one perfect next step. There's just a next step. Right. Um, yeah, I, I love that. Response. I love that yeah, because that that's part of the problem is, yes, I know I need to take steps, but I want to make sure I take the right step <laughs> and that even before I take the right step, I have to have all my ducks in a row um, yeah. because there's the assumption that when I take each step I take should not make any mistakes. Exactly. <laughs> each step I take should be enormously successful. <laughs> Yeah, and it should be the right step. Exactly like you say, there's one right step to one right outcome. And it actually reminds me of an example from another coach, if I may um, share. Yes. Um, he, I, I interviewed him actually, because he also, he started and also from actually from place of, okay, I must make this work now, or I really want to make this work now. And he was still in his training and he's also an improv teacher. And people told him, um, oh, you should uh, do an improv. Um, workshop for coaches I said that's a great idea so he did it and only like one or two people signed up so he was like okay this is a failure this is not going to happen but he did make one post on Facebook when he um, pronounced it announced it and um, somebody in a corporate saw that and reached out to him and said hey do you also do this for corporates and he said yes of course he never did of course but yeah answer is always yes um, and that became his biggest client. Um, so that step wasn't necessarily led to the success he thought, but it led to actually something way bigger that he couldn't even have imagined. So that's, that's, that's a, I think, the essence also. Stories like that are so inspiring because it, it helps us to remember that the possibilities are way more than we can probably currently think of. Yeah. And okay, so... Um, one of the things that people that keep people from taking steps forward is the feeling of confidence, yeah. right? I mean, especially in the beginning, um, which is why so many people um, take trainings, right? <laughs> like got to take another go. And I, I say that as somebody who sells trainings and courses, yeah. I still hope that people will uh, get used to the feeling of taking steps even without confidence, but tell, tell, tell us, let I me mean, talk to us about this. Like, how do you, how do you think about that? Confidence There's so and many steps. things that have come into my <laughs> mind. Yes. And, yeah. and I will say even, you know, um, even, I don't know, a lot of experienced coaches that still go through phases of yes. what I'm actually yes. doing. Do I actually know what it's, what I'm doing as a coach? Am I doing it? Also, I think it's a feeling that can almost always stay with us. Uh, there's also something that helped me a lot. And that's, um, it's what Brene Brown calls the FFT um, uh, strategy. I don't know if I'm allowed to say. <laughs> to yes, say please. That. Uh, I, I... FFT, <laughs> FFT stands for fucking first time. And, and we all know Brene Brown probably. Yeah, and yeah. she says, you know, when you reach a certain age, like uh, end of your thirties, you realize that there's only one way through to, to reach something that feels uncomfortable. And it's right through it. And she says, the best strategy and i also use it is to actually acknowledge and name it wait this is an fft this is uncomfortable this is this sucks and this is gonna suck for a while and that's normal you know so also normalizing it and and i think confidence is also another i do think confidence grows as we do because i grew so much in confidence by just building my business because you know i'm I didn't grow up as an entrepreneur or being easily out there. You know, I'm a shy, I, I was, I used to be a very shy introvert. I'm still an introvert, but you know, I, I taught myself to be more comfortable being out there and it grew my confidence. So I think you have to do. I also think that when we sometimes start a business, we tend to focus a lot on the doing. I do think at least half of our success is determined by also inner work about you know, looking at also the owning our gifts and our confidence. And I, 
I think the doing helps also with that. Um, but when we keep on feeling stuck and not good enough, I think there's also something there probably to look at, like, okay, what yeah. is underneath this? I wonder if you have any thoughts on how gender can play a role in all this. Um, you know, I, I think in many cultures, boys are encouraged to experiment and, you know, kind of like uh, be more bold um, yeah. and girls uh, tend to have some programming towards, you know, getting things right or being perfect or something like that. And so I always admire, uh, well, I admire everybody who, 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 who takes steps forward, but I, I, I imagine it might be, it's probably different for women versus men. It, it's, it's unfortunate and I hate admitting it, but it's true. I see it. I, for instance, also see uh, um, with coaches that I know that when it comes to charging, I more often hear men than women say, of course I charge you a decent amount. And, and men sometimes start coaching, you know, in the, when, when they start their training or when they read the book, they already feel confident enough to just doing, do it. And women want to have that certificate. It's generalizing and it's not for everybody, but I do see it more often that people of women want that certificate first or that proof of validation. And I think it's exactly like you said, it, it's how we grew up. It, it reminds me of I'm a big fan of Lennon Doyle and our book Untamed. And she gives an example of her uh, daughters and she um, she has a bunch of kids over and they're watching a, a movie and there are a bunch of boys and a bunch of little girls. And she comes in and, and asks, uh, does anyone want pizza? And the boys don't even look up, they say yes. And the girls like look at each other, are checking and seeing and looking for validation. And then one represents the group and says, no, we're fine. So we. I think it also has to do with that. We, we just are conditioned differently. Um, and, and boys, yeah, grow up more. Yeah, just having that, not confidence, but just doing and trying and looking less for external validation. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, so this is one of the reasons why being in a group or community of, um, you know, especially maybe for, for women, it's like being in a group community of starters, of people who take action uh, yeah. is so encouraging and, and uh, uh, effective because they're looking around and it's like, oh yeah, everyone else is taking action and too. Can, and also, <laughs> oh, everybody else is scared too, but right. they're doing yes. it anyway. Yes. And I really right. like sharing. So I like sharing lessons from experts and mentors and people who are Along, further along those, but I also love sharing. I also send a weekly email in which I share lessons from coaches that maybe are two steps ahead, that um, just started that launched their first group program and share. I was so scared and I, I procrastinated so long, but I finally did it and I'm so happy. I think these are also inspirations, not only the people that already built that massive business, but people that are actually just like you and are not afraid to admit that they're also scared as hell. Yeah, yeah. Um, one of the things uh, that you help people with um, is to get more clarity about the, who it is they're serving. Um, I mean, their ideal client. And you talk about how, well, it's so helpful to, <laughs> to know who it is because then, you know, you it's easier to reach them and, and to... Um, have have them notice your messages, but do, do you want to say anything about that that process that you've noticed is helpful for others to discover who who that is? Yeah, I'm I, so I'm I'm you know I'm not a marketing expert. I my 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 experience also comes from my own doing and from what I see from others. I do not believe that you need to have your niche exactly figured out before you start. Um, I think it's what a lot of marketing experts will say, but what it does when we don't know is that we got stuck here again and that we try to think in a logical way like, okay, I, I used to be a lawyer, so maybe it makes sense to now, and that could be, but maybe not. Maybe that all comes from the mind and then we get stuck and we start you know, either working on our website a lot to tweak our content and tweak our niche content. And the only way 
I think if you're stuck on it is to get clear on it is to start doing. And I recently heard somebody say, I really liked it. Um, um, it's like a, a dance with the universe or something like you just throw something out there and you start doing and you get feedback and then it changes. And of course, people will maybe say, but if I don't know, how am I going to reach them? <laughs> you know, um, because then I cannot message them. But I don't believe that because there's always something that you do know. Um, there's always, you know, your values, you know what you stand for, you know what gives you energy. And if you start putting out that out there, and if you literally start coaching everybody and just we have, we all have a warm network of people that don't even know what we do. You know, we often forget that the people around us, even our family and friends, when they know you're a coach, they actually know nothing. So, you know, maybe you start giving sample sessions to people around you, not to have them as a coach, but so that they know what you do and you can practice. And um, yeah, just by doing. And I do think often we know more than we we admit because we're also afraid to choose, um, especially when you went through a training or a certification, you, you practiced a lot. So you, you can go back to seeing what gave, what gives me energy and what kind of people don't. And I think it's also the daring of owning it and saying no. Um, yeah. Yeah. I love, I love all this because I totally agree with you. Like if you uh, don't, try working with different types of clients or potential clients how do you know uh what really is a good fit like yeah. I, I was really surprised um when i was starting my business that you know of course i, I when i started probably many, many of us go like, oh our ideal client looks and sounds just like us or uh, has the exact same life experience and i found that my ideal client was very different from me yeah it was surprising to me and, um, but I wouldn't have known unless I had tried, you know, coaching and, and working with different, different people. So I really love that. And, um, and this idea of making sure your network, um, you give as, as many samples as you can, because otherwise you don't have the experience of experiencing different people, but also they don't really know what you do because when you say you're a coach, people don't really get it. Yeah. Most people don't get it. Um, what are, do you have any other, any other suggestions for actions for simply starting? Um, you know, what other types of actions do you find that your clients, uh, do that mm -hmm. help them to keep moving forward? I know there's mm -hmm. not one right answer, but any other yeah. examples? Yeah. Uh, one thing that comes to mind is if you, another thing that often comes up is, oh, I need a website. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think if you have limited time, because often I work with people that are still in a job and I mm -hmm. want to build it beside the job. Yes. If you have limited time and you, you're thinking about creating a website, but you're not sure yet, don't start with creating a website would be my advice because that, especially when you're not completely clear yet, that will probably get you stuck behind the scenes a lot because then you spend a lot of time behind the scenes building your website and then your website's done and then nobody's seeing your website um so also then my advice would be what is here right now what is near me who did i already coach and didn't ask for a referral yet who is in my warm network that i can reach out to and also network a lot and not network with the goal of getting clients because i think that's often where we go wrong uh, or yeah, wrong. I don't like to use the word wrong, but also when we want to find a new job, we start networking the moment that we lose our job mm. and hope to find a new job. But right. most fun I get, um, and I have a strong network, but the first year of my business, I spent so much time just genuinely giving, giving contact, having just conversations with people to see what's alive for them, seeing how I can help them, whether it's with an article or another person or whatever. So I would always say also just being out there and not necessarily with the goal of having you as my client, but as genuinely, like, how can I serve every single person that I meet? How can I help them? And that's how you build an incredibly strong network. I love it. It's so, um, 
so much more of a fulfilling way, enjoyable way of relating to others, not to look at each person as what can you do for me? What can you do for me? But what can I do for you? Yeah. You know, it, it, if, if someone is in your network, uh, especially if they're a friend or colleague, um, there's something you enjoy and appreciate about them, you know, and that's like a great way to, to start the conversation, right? And then to learn more and, and to find out. What, I mean, uh, yeah, you, you, are, um, uh, you are an example of a generous person because, you know, the first, the first way we got to know each other is you reached out and says, hey, can I bring you to, to share with my audience? I'm like, oh, okay, great. <laughs> You know, and then naturally, I just said, well, gosh, my mom is so generous. I mean, let me bring her to share with my audience, too. You know, it was just a very natural, natural uh, emergence of reciprocity. And anyway, so uh, thank you for thank you for saying that. Um, I hope everybody watching this gets, in, you know, is feeling inspired to simply start to take the next step. And, um, you know, whether it's reaching out or to one's network or, um, you know, and, and not feeling like you don't have to build this fancy website. I see this so often. I'm glad you mentioned that people say, well, gosh, first step in the business is to build a great website. Right. And yeah. then they, they end up spending months doing it. Um, and probably thousands of dollars <laughs> if they hire somebody to help with it. And then once they finish the website, their niche yeah. has already changed. <laughs> and, know, yeah, like, exactly. and also if you don't hire someone, you also spend thousands of dollars because you, your own time is just that's as right. valuable. You're you right. Yeah. Eight thousands of dollars, maybe if you were just out there. And there's one more thing that comes to mind, if I may. Um, a lot of coaches also like building a community or a big, I, I, one thing that I really see is don't underestimate the value of connecting people, whether it is one on one or in groups. People really value that. So if you see that you attract a certain kind of person or clients, maybe maybe they want to be brought together and maybe you would enjoy that a lot of well. People, we need more, more community and more sense of belonging. So I think coaches can play a really important role in that. Mm, I love it. Well, we have just a few minutes left and I want to make sure people understand better um, the, the service that you provide. So... Um, for the aspiring coaches out there who are wanting support to simply start or to take the next step and to keep taking steps, tell us uh, what you offer. Yeah, well, people can always go to um, the website that's uh, www.simply hyphen is that the english word start.com mm -hmm. yeah yeah simply uh, hyphen start.com great yeah and there is there's information about the coaches community in there um that people can join um i will also make it possible for people to just join it to get a um a free month um so you can go to coactive community also non-coactive coaches are welcome to join yeah so all, all uh, kinds of coaches yes yes all kinds of coaches right. and then there's also information on there to um work um, work with me one-on-one uh, yeah. -on -one, and people can always just have a, a chat with me for an hour and um, I, in that in that one hour I will um, at least have you walk back uh, walk away with um, one piece of action and, and and feeling inspired and excited again if if you are feeling stuck or don't know what to do um, mm. and if you want then more that's possible but yeah I'm always happy to just have a chat very generous of you. Thank you for, for offering that um, service. So any other kind of final words of encouragement as we complete this conversation? Mm -hmm. No, I, I don't think so. I think um, for me, Simply Start does say it all. And yeah. I also have, I, I like, I, I, I just put the quote on my website recently because it, it resonated with me so much. It's from Martin Luther King about fate and fate is taking the first step when you don't see the whole staircase yet mm. and i think that's what it is about for me and and patience if you yeah, want to grow yeah. your business or whatever it is that you want to grow organically and authentically just like you also do and teach it takes time you know and sometimes you you do meet someone that in some way catapults your business but more often than not you know it takes time and the fact that it is not as big as you want it yet doesn't mean that you're not really good at what you do you know we have to separate them you have to separate the fact that you're a great coach or writer or actor or whatever from 
you know, um, not, I think Eckhart Tolle who wrote The Power of Now, it took years before his book reached a great audience. Um, he wasn't reaching a lot of people for years and he was already brilliant. Um, so I think that's also an important reminder. The fact wow, that thank you. it's not there yet doesn't mean we're not brilliant yet. Abs that's a really great point. And um, for those who are, are able to join a community like yours, um, the colleagues and peers in the community will remind them uh, that they are brilliant and to take action and that it takes time. <laughs> and, and it's more fun to, to do it together if possible. Yes, so fun is important. Having yeah. fun in the process is, yes. I think, thank you for that. Yeah, I love it. Thank you for the service you provide and uh, the way that you, you know, kind of model for your people um, how how to keep taking steps. So yeah, thank thanks, you. Manon. Thank you for this time. And I really, really enjoyed this conversation. Um, yeah, and I hope you. we're going to do more together. Yes, yes, me too.